San Diego Padres continuing their series a mile high. Game two with the Rockies on a beautiful summer night in Denver. What do you say we get to the action? Denelson Lament getting the start for the visitors. Mark Reynolds says, hey, how you doing, Denelson? Number 20 for the Rockies, first baseman. Speaking of first baseman, Will Myers helps the Padres regain the lead in the fifth. Will at the plate. Number 17 for him. He'll lift it up into the thin air, giving the Padres a 4-3 lead. But that dissipates in the bottom half of the frame. Carlos Gonzalez doubles to the wall. LeMahieu and Pereira score, and Rockies never look back. From there, we go to the board. Your final score, 9-7. Padres will look to avoid the sweep Wednesday afternoon. The San Diego Aviators open up their team title defense against Maria Sharapova on Sunday. The former number one, not bad for opening day ticket sales. Springfield Lasers, well, they're not quite the marquee draw. So tonight's take a picture night with the King Cup. Nice trophy, but certainly not as nice as that one right there. Oh, by the way, 37 days and counting till the prep picks and reports, season 19. Back to tennis. Aviator Ryan Harrison completes a late rally for the home team, winning a single match over Benjamin Becker to give the Aviators the win, 18-17. After the words, KUSI tennis correspondent Joaquin Duncan spied Coco Vandeweghe in the crowd. Here's an exclusive. Coco will be an aviator for Tuesday's match against the OC Breakers. Well, I know I'll have a lot of ticket requests, that's for sure. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's I haven't played here in how many years since the WTA tournament used to be here. You know, World Team Tennis is always a special thing for me. I love playing World Team Tennis. It's a great environment, and I have a really fun time playing. The 78th annual Del Mar meet almost upon us. The 36-day meet begins Wednesday, 2 p.m. The Good Morning San Diego crew will be out in four six bells. Carlos and Lisa and the entire gang will bring you all sorts of pre-race hype. And then uh, I imagine this guy, Joe Harper, will be part of their festivities. Uh, the siege, of course, is all the friends I haven't heard from for a year wanting to take me to lunch and... Uh, make sure that they, they get their table on opening day so uh, but it's uh, you know it's like kind of like it's too late to think of anything you left to do so uh, we just planted 20,000 flowers uh, uh, cleaned the joint up uh, <laughs> fluffed up the racetrack behind me and we got 1800 horses here ready uh, to go horses maybe take a back seat on opening day to all the people watching can you describe the fest festive attitude for those who have never experienced an opening day well, I think it's the greatest people watching day anywhere in the country. Uh, uh, when you think about it, um, I mean, everybody's here. Everybody's got a hat on. All the beautiful people are here. Uh, some celebrities are here. Some uh, uh, some athletes, professional athletes are coming. Uh, we've got we've got an interesting group. I, I always hear the big complaint though is there's just not enough pretty girls there. Uh, what are we going to do about that this year? Yeah, it's really sad. You know, you just walk around here and just can't see anybody to stare at. No, I think we'll do okay in that department. Yeah. So are, are there tickets still available for the Breeders' Cup? Sure. If you go online, uh, breederscup.com, uh, you'll see some some available uh, tickets are still still on. A lot of the high end stuff is gone. Uh, I know I had to pay $1,600 for my seat. Uh, there are no free seats, apparently, at Breeders' Cup. My Come. wife said, should we bring the kids? I said, no, I'm not even sure I can afford to bring you. Uh, Wednesday's guest, well, we'll have Patrick Valenzuela, a former jockey who is now kind of a TV commentator. He'll be joining us at 545. At 645, Chris Ello will be on the rail with me here in the studio, and we'll be, well, our entire crew will be out at the track, so we'll be having Rick Willis join us, all sorts of fun. Uh, all day long at the, where the turf meets the surf, the world's best golfers, meanwhile, are at Royal Burksdale, the 146th edition of the British Open. Tees off Thursday. Phil Mickelson, well, he forgot to bring his driver, lefty, opting to carry two three irons instead of a driver. Hardly new for Mickelson. We all remember his decision to carry two three woods at the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. He still couldn't find the short grass and was out of it by the weekend. Here's hoping the two iron strategy fares better it wasn't the right fit and there was a another couple clubs I wanted to have in the bag instead. So drivers out for you here? Well for me I'll put in the three wood that I use at Muirfield in uh, 13. It's a hot three wood and, and uh, I can still get a lot out of it but it's a much easier club for me to hit low so even if I'm into the wind I hit it every bit as far as I do a driver. Monday Rick Willis told you about Tiger Woods falling out of the top 1,000 in the world golf rankings. It's hard to believe. He was number one just three years ago. Jordan Speed talking about Tiger at Royal Burksdale.
doubt you'll see a dominance like that maybe ever again in the game. Uh, I just think, you know, guys are learning, guys are getting stronger, athletes are going to golf, you're getting, um, guys are winning younger, playing more fearless, even in major championships, and it's, I just, I just think that it's so difficult now. Uh, not that it, I think it was probably equally as difficult then. I can't speak to it, but uh, I wouldn't get your hopes up for a domination like that whatsoever. Well, after rest day at the Tour de France, stage 16, a 102 mile ride from Le Puy Lenville to Romo Chaza. Early on, Jarlinson Pantano gets tangled up with Axel Domont. Domont would return to the race. Pantano would have to retire. As for the rest of the ride, let's cruise along and enjoy Southeastern France. I don't know who got that. Uh-huh, oui, oui, baby. Uh, Michael Matthews wins a sprint to the finish over three other riders while Chris Froome hangs on to the yellow jersey for a third straight stage. Oh, he gets to kiss the pretty girls. It's the seventh time in the this year's tour that he's won a stage. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Chris Christie just can't catch a break, even when he catches a baseball. But first, here's Mike Milburn and the ASR Plays of the Week. The boys of summer just keep heating up. North City Blues' Maddox Haley launching a two-run comet deep in orbit as he helps lead his team to the big win. This moonshot good enough to make Maddox candidate number one for the All Sports Report Play of the Week. Staying on the offensive side, Escondido's John Cervantes reaching high, sending the ball a long way over the right field fence and up against the hill. It's a blast good enough to make John candidate number two for the All Sports Report.